Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my channel if you're new. My name is Brooklyn and today I'm going to be sharing my breastfeeding routine with you guys. And then I'm also going to be opening up for a little Q&A at the end. I did one of these videos with my son two and a half years ago um, and it is one of my most viewed videos. A lot of you guys found me from that video and I still get messages to this day of people messaging me telling me how much that video helped them and how it helped them make it through a full year of nursing or to keep going when they wanted to quit. Just a lot of really encouraging words. So if I am able to give that to someone through this experience, then that is what this video is for. Like I said, I nursed my son for a full year and that entire process from start to finish, um, from breastfeeding to pumping while working full time to weaning, literally everything is um, documented here on YouTube. So I'll have a playlist down below. You guys can click that if you're interested in checking out those videos. And I just recently had a baby girl. She is three months old now, which is crazy to think. Um, but we have definitely had a different um, experience breastfeeding than I did with my son. So that's what this video is about. I'm going to break it up into three different sections. So I'm going to tell you how the first few weeks went with breastfeeding. Um, and then I'm going to tell you our routine currently and how I've built a stash. I already have a massive stash and then I'm going to go into my YouTube um, community tab and I'm going to pull some questions from there. If I've answered your questions throughout the video, then I'm probably not going to go in depth with them just because this is going to be a very long video. Um, you might wanna grab a snack, grab a drink, and sit down, hang out with us, because um, I'm gonna be covering a lot, a lot of stuff, and I hope that this can help you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. Okay, so let's just start with that first week. I feel like that is the hardest week of nursing and breastfeeding and getting into the routine of things and figuring it out. And that can be so hard and it can honestly like make or break your breastfeeding experience. So I'm gonna share mine with you guys. And like I said, this experience was completely different than with my son. Um, and I was at that point where I was ready to give up. And that's, you know, that's a hard pill to swallow, but I was there. Um, the only thing that got me through is that I knew that it would get better and I knew that it was just a phase. So I'm gonna share with you guys what happened during that first week. Um, and hopefully if you're going through any of the same things then this can help you. So I will say my son did have a lip tie and that um, affected our latch until he was five weeks old. Whenever I discovered it, figured out what it was, I had like no idea what a lip tie was. Um, we got that revised and then from then on out, it was like his latch and everything was perfect. Like I said, I have lots of videos on that. Um, but specific to Collins, we knew going into having her that we were going to check her for a lip tie like immediately because with Emmett having it, I just knew what to look for if like the nursing experience wasn't going as I'd hoped. So both babies were C-section babies. Um, so when she was placed on my chest in PACU, we immediately put her on the breast and she did amazing. She latched right away and she nursed really, really well for like that first full day. It wasn't until the next day that we were there that she really started to become like a sleepy eater. And I had never had that problem with Emmett. He was like a snapping turtle. Anytime you put it anywhere near him, he was like snapping at you. And Collins wasn't like that. We were trying absolutely everything under the sun to get her to like wake up and eat. And it just felt impossible to be honest with you. Like I could not get her to wake up a lot of the times. Um, and so we kind of took that home with us. We came home two days after my C-section. So 48 hours later and my milk were, was coming in. It was coming home, or the day I was coming home from the hospital, my milk was coming in. Um, I had a really big milk supply, like almost an oversupply with Emmett. And I had started leaking colostrum like super early in my pregnancy. So I kind of figured that it was gonna be the same thing that I was gonna have like a really big oversupply again. And so when we got home, my milk started coming in and there is nothing more painful, more uncomfortable than your milk coming in. Like, I wish you could just skip that and hold because it is awful. Um, I was just like extremely engorged and I felt like I had enough milk to literally feed five babies. So... I was relieving as much as I possibly could. And even doing that, it was like I would relieve and it was back within like 
an hour um, and I wasn't pumping I know if you keep pumping you're telling your body to produce more um, so it's like a sticky situation but I literally was gonna get mastitis if I did not relieve my milk ducts so I was still having issues with Collins like waking up and and eating she was losing weight she was born at eight pounds eight ounces at 38 weeks so she was a little bit early and she ended up getting down close to seven pounds because she just like didn't have a good latch and she wasn't waking up to eat. So those first few days at home, the engorgement, it was awful. Um, I had David do the same thing that he did with Emmett. He literally got hand towels, threw it on my boobs and just like started massaging out my milk ducts and just like trying to relieve some of the knots. Um, we filled up two kitchen towels full of colostrum just by doing that and then from there it was like Collins wouldn't wake up she wouldn't eat and when she did she literally like didn't even hardly relieve me at all so I'm going to share with you guys too while I'm telling you these stories some products that I use like what I had to do the whole nine yards just to try and help you as much as possible so while she was nursing um she was like almost at every like three to four hours and like i said it was really really hard to wake her up but when we did we had a little routine her latch turned awful once my milk came in and like my nipples just started getting so raw and bruised and it was so uncomfortable um paired with the engorgement so what I was doing, and I did this with my son Emmett, like when I came home from the hospital, I started to use the Hacka on the opposite breast that I was nursing, and that's how I built a huge stash with him. So I came home, and when my milk came in, I only nurse on one side every feeding. I never switch sides. I've always just done one side because there's plenty of milk there for them, and so that's just what I do personally. If you have a lower supply, then you definitely want to be switching breast. Um, but for me, I just was able to stay on one. So the breast that Collins would nurse on when I came home, I would put this ladybug hack on. I tried this with her for the first time, and it's okay. I definitely would not recommend this over the um, original Hakka hack. I'm probably gonna say it wrong. It's probably gonna offend somebody, but. Um, I definitely prefer this one over this. The only good thing about this one is that you can like sit it inside of your bra so you don't have to hold onto it or worry about a baby kicking it off. There are hacks to this one where you can take like a hair tie and clip it to your nursing bra. You can figure out a way to make it stay. Um, but overall, like I prefer this one, but I was using this one. So I would put this in my bra right away. That's the first thing I would do. And then, I would have to, I, this was literally a process guys. Like it was a straight up process. So I went, I had David go out to the store and I had David buy me nipple shields and this Freedom Mom breast massager. This thing does heat and massaging. So I had him go to Target and pick these things up for me. <laughs> and I had never used a nipple shield in my life, but like I was so desperate because my nipples were dying, like dying. And so I had him get me nipple shields and um, the massager. So my routine, every single time I would go to nurse her, it was like a 15 minute long routine just to even get her on the boob. I would sit down, I would take my little massager and I would massage the breast that um, she was not going to be nursing on, the, the one that was gonna be catching in the ladybug. And this was because I had such a big supply that I had to relieve that boob at the same time. So I would turn on the heat and I would turn on the massager and I would literally just go over and around my boob for like five minutes, just warming up the milk and getting it flowing. After that, I would take my nipple shield and, or no, I would take my little pack of guy and stick it in and squeeze it and attach it to the breast. And then I would massage the one that she was going to be feeding on for just a little bit, not, not near as long because she would be working that one out. Then I would take my nipple shield and I would um, lather it up. Like I use this nipple, Mother Love nipple cream. And it was like rubbing, like the rubber on the nipple shield was rubbing really weird. So I would have to like lather it up and then stick it on my boob and then try and get her to get latched onto the nipple shield. And I'm telling you guys, it literally took forever. So once we would do that, she would nurse for like... 10 to 15 minutes she probably fell asleep i can't really remember off the top of my head if she like used to fall asleep when she was eating but was eating but just getting her awake and going was the hardest part so that was my routine for like two to three days 
and as soon as she would get done eating, I would have to pump some more because I was so engorged. So there was a night that I literally almost threw in the towel and gave up breastfeeding because I was just like so overwhelmed and it was just, it just wasn't working. So she would, you know, she wouldn't wake up to eat. My nipples were just like annihilated. They were bleeding. It was so painful. And just the thought of like her nursing just like sent chills down my spine. Like it was just, it was not a good it wasn't going well. There was one night in the middle of the night, I nursed her and by the end of it, fighting her to get her awake and then like my letdown and just being covered in milk and I looked at her and she's covered in blood and it was from my nipple. Like we had blood all over us and I was like, I am not doing this. Like I'm not gonna keep putting myself through this pain, putting her through the pain of like not being able to eat because she can't latch on very well. Like I'm just gonna go pump at the next feeding. I'm gonna pump right now and then I will feed her a bottle at the next feeding. So that's what I did. I pumped out the milk and it can stay at room temperature for up to four hours. And I knew that she would be feeding in like two. So I left it at room temperature, put it in a bottle. And then when she woke up, I just went and got the bottle. I didn't like warm it up or anything, which was my mistake. I know that now, but um, she likes warm milk. Some babies don't care and it didn't care at all. But I took the room temperature milk at her next feeding. I was so excited. I was like, yes, I'm not gonna have to like put her on my bloody nipples. <laughs> And I tried to give her the bottle and she wouldn't take it. Literally just pour it out of her mouth. Like she would not drink it. She was not interested at all. And I was like, great. So through the tears, stuck her back on my bloody nipple and nursed her. The next day I was like, David, we have got to call the pediatric dentist and get her in to get her um, lip tie revised. Like we have to get it fixed. So that's what we did. We went into the pediatric dentist. He I think he got us in like the next day at 8 a.m. It was the same day we had newborn pictures at 10 a.m. And I was like, I don't even care. Like we're going to do it because like this has to be done. So we took her in um, 8 a.m. to get her revision. He checked her for all of her ties, cheek, lip, tongue, literally everything that there was. So she had the lip tie. So he um, said that she could possibly have a tongue tie, but it, that it was so, so minimum that he didn't think that it was worth revising, but if she still had issues nursing, then to come back and he would do that for free. So she, he did the um, lip tie and then we left. And I kid you not, kid you not, we came home and I nursed her for the first time and it was pain free. Literally felt like we'd been nursing for six months. Like she latched on, she ate, she literally sucked me dry. She relieved everything, um, no pain, no nipple shield, nothing. It was night and day, 180 experience. So that was kind of the change, the turning point of our nursing journey. And from there on out, things got a lot smoother. Okay, so after she had her lip tie revised, we completely, I completely stopped using the reliever on the other breast when I would nurse her because I didn't need to. She started clearing me out um, and I started cutting back on pumping sessions. So instead of having to pump between every single feed, I was only having to pump like three times a day. And like eventually within like, three weeks maybe, I was able to not be pumping at all during the day to relieve myself because she was picking it. She was literally emptying me out. In one week from the revision, she gained almost a full pound. Like that's how much she was struggling to like actually um, get milk out of my breast with her latch. Like she did a 180. I highly recommend if you were having any issues with like your nursing, your latch, um, your baby gaining weight, if they're gassy, get them checked by a pediatric dentist. Your pediatrician honestly might not know. They might be like, oh no, they're fine. Um, just, you don't even need a referral. Just take them to a pediatric dentist and have them looked at because it will completely change your breastfeeding experience. Um, and it doesn't really hurt them. It takes two seconds. You have to do like exercises with their lip or wherever they get it. You just have to like keep running your finger over it throughout the day so that the skin doesn't grow back and you have the same issue, but it's not painful to them. Um, like I said, we had newborn pictures the same day and she was totally fine. So once I started weaning off all of my pumping sessions, we are basically down to doing our routine that we currently have. So 
Um, I feed her every two to two and a half hours. At the two hour mark, she is like ready to eat. This girl loves her food. She has gained so fast and she's so big now considering how little she got. She's just like packing on the pounds. So we nurse every two to two and a half hours. Um, religiously and then just recently she started to sleep through the night which has been amazing when she wasn't sleeping through the night we were getting up every like three to four hours it was like different stretches you know as she got older the stretches got longer and during that time there was only a few times that i would have to get up in the middle of the night to pump like in the very beginning um but like right now she sleeps anywhere from 10 to 11 hours throughout the night and what i do is i put her to bed at between 6 30 and 7 and then she usually doesn't wake up until between like 4 and 5 and so when i put her to bed at 6 30 and 7 i always nurse her and then i will hold her up and burp her and lay her down and then i will so it'll be between 6 30 and 7 and then i will pump before i go to bed so usually i'm going to bed anywhere from like 9 to 11 o'clock at night and so I just do one good pump before I go to sleep and then that gets me all the way through the night because I've like trained my body pretty much now that I don't need that those sessions in the middle of the night. So I'm not producing as much overnight, which has been amazing. Um, and I've still been able to build up a lot of milk. So usually at my pump session at night, I get between five to six ounces. Um, and I'm storing that away. I'm actually not going back to work, so I'm not going to need it for like working. I'm staying home and I'm, I have a business that I run and I'm doing that. So I don't have to have a massive supply, but I do have quite a bit. I'm actually gonna get the milk out. I'm gonna show you guys everything. Um, what I use to pump every night, I swear by this, I literally, I only use this. I use my Manila, Medela Harmony pump. This thing is, absolutely amazing it's so fast i can pump within five minutes and i have my five to six ounces stored away i'm completely relieved and we make it through the night and um, they did change the flanges on this from when i had emmet and i love these they're like a flex fit super comfortable um like i said this is medella i will have everything that i am mentioning linked down below for you guys if you are curious um but this is what i use to pump every single night i did get a second Spectra, my insurance covered this for free. Be sure to check into your insurance to see if you get a free pump. Um, almost all of them will cover your pump or a portion of it. So I have the Spectra S2. I highly recommend this. I used this with Emmett when I was working full time pumping and it was a great pump. I did use this a little bit in the beginning, um, but I haven't really reached for it in quite a while. I also use the Mother Love Nipple Cream in the very beginning stages of nursing. Like you're, you want to keep your nipples moisturized, keep them from getting dry and cracked. If you're pumping, you like this is awesome to like lube up the flange with. Um, I highly recommend this. I do have a link and a code down below you guys can use to get you some Mother Love Nipple Cream. It's also all natural, so like if they eat it, totally fine. Um, and then yeah, I have my Hawkas that I used in the very, very beginning. And then I did use a nipple shield. We didn't have any problems transitioning out of this because this was kind of like a grab and use whenever I was like in extreme pain. I also use the Medela storage bags, but that's like totally preference to you. Um, and then in the beginning I was storing away three ounces and now I am storing away five ounces. I'm not sure how much she takes in a feed currently, but I know she was drinking like three ounces when she was smaller. She probably drinks more than that now. Um, but the plan is when she's older and she is drinking the stored milk, she, like I'll just take two three ounce bags and make six ounce bottles for her. So that is kind of like our routine and what we're doing. Like I said, I nurse on one side every single feeding. I highly recommend finding an app that you can keep track of everything with. I absolutely love the baby feed timer app. I used it with Emmett and um, I'm using it with her too. And I just opened it and it's actually been two hours since she ate and she's rolling around. So I know that she wants to eat. I'll probably go get her and let and finish this video with her. This is what it looks like. So it'll tell you how long it's been since you've nursed and then it tells you which side you need to nurse on. So I really, really love this. It also keeps track of how long they nursed. Um, and she is down to about seven to eight feedings a day. So she's, she's consistently every two hours until we get to the middle of the night. Um, 
let's see what else I, like I said I'll have everything linked down below um, but that was our routine I'm gonna go feed her and then we will jump into the Q&A portion of this video okay guys we're back little Collins is fed and she's happy this is Collins if you guys haven't seen her before if you're new to my channel she is going to hang out with me for the rest of this video okay we're gonna jump into questions on my youtube channel um i posted over on my community tab i just posted so there's not very many on this specific that was a good word this specific post but there are there was another one um that i posted a little while ago and asked for some questions so let me pull that up okay any differences you notice between breastfeeding a girl versus a boy my first was a boy and baby girls are so new to me so yes i think that's probably um obviously my experience is a lot different with her versus emmett so i mean it could just be like coincidence but um it's definitely been different the next question um does the attachment with nursing get easier? My daughter does not care to be in anyone else's arms but mine. She's currently five months old. Collins also loves her mom. So, I mean, I'm sure it will eventually, but right now, she just loves me. Someone said, have you ever, have you ever used a breast shield? If so, do you have any tips on weaning off of it? Pregnant with baby number two and her first baby, she would not nurse without it. Eventually went to exclusively pumping. Um, I did use it, but it was for such a short period of time that I never really had to wean off of it. So I don't have any advice for that specifically. Um, I would just try to alternate and maybe try every feeding without it and see if eventually baby takes, takes your breast without using the shield. Are you puking on me? That was definitely a puke. You're so cute. You gonna say hi? Okay, how does this time breastfeeding compare to when you had Emmett? It's totally different. How do you keep your supply up? Any supplements you take? Example, mother's milk, tea, lactation cookies. Also, when you pump, how long do you pump for and how much milk do you get from each breast? How many times do you, you I think it's supposed to say pump a day. Um, so I don't take anything really to help with my supply. I do drink body armor. Um, and then whenever I was pumping with Emmett, I did like those lactation cookies from Target that you can buy. I forget the exact name of them, but I will link them down below. But other than that, I never haven't really ever taken any supplements. Um, when I pump, I usually get about four ounces from the breast that I didn't feed on four to five maybe ish and then two to three on the one that I had just nursed on um but whenever I was like just pumping I haven't actually just like pumped without feeding so I'm not sure how much I would get because I'm not currently having to pump but overall I'll get between five to six ounces in five minutes while pumping on my harmony how do you keep your toddler occupied while breastfeeding a newborn? I feel like nursing and feeding is a full-time job. Um, honestly, I just let Emmett do whatever he wants while I'm feeding Collins. A lot of times he just wants snacks and to eat. And so it like kind of lines up perfectly where he will sit in his chair and eat a snack and I'll put on a show and he's like contained to his seat um, while I nurse her. And she is a very fast eater. She usually is done nursing within 10 minutes. So... Um, it doesn't take a lot of time, but I know some babies can nurse for like 30 minutes So if that's the case, then honestly, I'm not really sure I would try to like sit them down give them a snack Maybe give them like TV time. I'm totally not against kids watching TV. My son has learned so much from watching TV literally so much um, But yeah, I would just try to find a distraction I've also gotten really good at just like walking around and nursing her so I can like throw her on and be walking around and like taking care of him if I need to so um, it gets easier but there in the beginning it is really hard how long do you plan on breastfeeding also how did you wean Emmett um, I'm my goal is a year for her um, and then I have a whole video on how I weaned Emmett I naturally weaned down my supply to where we just went to like 
one feeding a day and then got rid of that one. So I do have an entire video on that. I'll link it down below. How long do you nurse on the first breast? So I only do one breast and it's 10 minutes. If I go over 10 minutes, then she's going to puke a lot. Like she gets way too much to eat. So you're so cute. You probably can't see your face with that bow. Um, how do you build a milk stash? What do you recommend for first time moms when it comes to nursing for the first time? Any do's or don'ts on nursing? Um, so my milk stash is just from my oversupply, but if you are trying to build a stash, if you are going to be going back to work, start pumping before you think you need to. Um, because I have friends who didn't start pumping until the week before they were going to have to go back to work. And then they were literally like struggling to get a good supply and get milk. So. Um, you're always gonna get less when you pump than if you were to actually have a baby at your breast. So start pumping early. I would literally, like once your milk is in and your engorgement's gone, I would start pumping a little bit after every feeding. If you're not nursing on both breasts, I would throw a hack on. Oh, girlfriend. Wiggly. You want your passy? Um, here you go. I would throw a hackle on the opposite breast that you're nursing on and catch some milk so that you have that to start growing a stash. Um, I'll link my other Q&A down below because I did talk a lot about building a stash there, but I would just try to pump like as much as you can, get as much extra as you can. I wouldn't make it like, I wouldn't like stress out about pumping, but if you you know, throw her on and you, or throw your baby on and you can attach a hacker or something while you're doing it, that will slowly start to build you a decent sash. How do you wean night feedings? Um, I just, she doesn't wake up. If she does wake up, I offer her pacifier and usually she goes right back to sleep. So, um, if your baby wakes up crying, don't immediately think that they're hungry and throw them on. I would just, um offer a passy and see if they go back to sleep within a couple minutes girlfriend you are heavy how long did you breastfeed emmett and how long do you plan on feeding collins um emmett was a year and she will be a year any advice for moms who were only able to breastfeed for four months a lip tie that was never revised, which led to a bad latch. I would like to be successful with the next one. Definitely take your baby to a pediatric dentist right away. Um, if your previous one had a lip tie for sure and get that revised because it will totally change your breastfeeding experience. Do you get blocked milk dugs at ducks? <laughs> if so, how do you deal with them? No, I've never had mastitis or blocked duck. I've been like, extremely lucky especially with my supply being like so massive i've been very lucky to not have to deal with either one of those um so i don't have any advice for that one i'm so sorry are you gonna have more kids <laughs> that's not a breastfeeding question how do you know the baby is done with one breast and wants the other so like i said i i know now that collins usually goes about 10 minutes but in the beginning um you can always like check their fist if they're really hungry <laughs> They're gonna have a fist and as they start to get full their hand will start to relax um and you can also you'll start to learn signs from your baby of when they are done eating maybe they'll just stop they'll start going to sleep if you have any anxiety about baby needing to eat in public how do you deal with it i don't i remember i was really nervous about it with emmett but i'm not at all so when i'm out in public and i need to nurse her i keep a cover in my car and if you've watched um if you've watched like my vlogs then you've probably seen a couple videos where i throw on a cover that is open on the sides and i nurse her in the car so if we go out i always like nurse her before we leave and then if i'm stuck somewhere and i've been out for two hours i will just like get in my car and i will nurse her and i always put on a cover even in my car only because people are pulling up next to you and getting in and out and it's just it's not that i think that if i saw someone nursing and they didn't have a cover in public i wouldn't think bad about you but i just don't want to like expose myself i'm just like i'm just 
I would rather just cover myself up and not put anyone in a situation where they would feel uncomfortable. Um, so even though I'm in my car, I have a cover and I just throw that on, I nurse her. And then um, if we're like out eating or if I'm at a family member's house, I do the exact same thing. I just throw a cover on and nurse her and that's what I do. How do you approach nighttime feeds? It was suggested to me to never go longer than eight hours overnight without a feed pumping session to not hurt supply. Um, so if you if your baby isn't gaining weight, definitely don't skip feedings. Um, talk to your pediatrician. I'm not going to tell you to skip feeding. Uh, my kid literally is huge. So she sleeps and I only will pump if I really feel like I'm starting to get engorged. And to be honest with you, if you ever hope that your baby sleeps through the night, then you're going to want to start weaning the night feeds. It's not going to affect your supply throughout the day because your body is going to realize when your baby's feeding and when your baby's not. So just like mine, my supply keeps up with me like every two, two, two every two hours, literally like almost five minutes from the two hour mark, my boob that I need to nurse on starts letting down. Like I have really bad letdown. Um, I have to wear like nursing pads all the time because I'm just like... Um, my boobs know but i've gotten to where in the middle of the night i don't do that um and they can go i can go extended periods of times without nursing her because I, my body has kind of learned our routine and so it knows that during the night i don't need to produce as much milk as i would during the day very weird but that's how it works um, if you're nervous about that and you need, like if you are trying to build a stash, that is one really good way to build a stash is if your baby is still sleeping through the night, get up and do that pumping session. Whenever I was working full time and I was, it was towards the end of um, our pumping, like it was towards the end, he was probably like nine to 10 months old. So we were getting really close to finishing up and we had gone through a lot of my stash. I was kept, I kept my nighttime pumping session just so I could have the milk for Emmett to like go to daycare or something just to keep my stash going. So if that's an issue for you, I definitely recommend getting up in the middle of the night and pumping just to get a little bit extra milk stashed away. Do you have a larger milk supply the second time around? I would say it's pretty much the same in the beginning, definitely in the beginning for sure. But my body has weaned down, not necessarily weaned, but adjusted to her needs a lot better this time um, than before. So I would say that right now at this current moment, it's the same. But in the very beginning, I did come on a lot stronger than I did with Emmett. I think that's it for the questions. I also get asked a lot like how long the breast milk is good in each place. So what I do is I usually keep like, I pump for like three days and keep it in the refrigerator. And on the third day, I move everything over to the freezer. Your milk can be good in the refrigerator for up to four days in the freezer of your refrigerator for up to six months, but you need to keep it like pushed back. You can't have it in the door of the freezer. And then if you have a deep freeze, like a big deep freeze, that's good for a full year. So I will put the milk into the refrigerator and at the third day I will start um, bagging it up. And so what I do, let me grab one. Okay, so here's one of my ones that I need to do. And I wanna show you this bottom down here, the clearer that you can see on the bottom. I'm not sure if it's gonna focus on the milk. So the clearer down here that you can kind of see, that is for milk and up here is hind milk. So the thick stuff on the top is like the like calorie, super calorie dense stuff. And then the four milk at the bottom is what comes out first. Like when you first start to nurse, that's what comes down out. So it's more watery. And whenever you um, get your milk, you never want to shake it. You always want to just like twirl it like this, just spin it around to mix it all up really good. And so, what I always do is I measure the milk out in a bottle and then I pour it into the bag because the bags aren't always accurate. So I always measure in my Modella bags and then pour it into the storage bag. Another thing is if I'm mixing two days worth of milk, I always use the earliest date. That way I know when it goes bad. Um, 
and then I store it. I will move it to my freezer to freeze on a shelf laying flat, and then I will move it out to my deep freeze. So I will quickly show you guys what I have stashed away so far, just so you can get an idea of what I've stashed just from everything that I've told you so far. And then we're gonna end it, huh? Okay, so I usually lay the milk in here and just flat until I take it outside to the deep freeze. So I've got several back there. Okay, and then this is what I have out in the deep freeze. So all of these are three ounce bags. Um, and you can see she was born on the 8th of March and like all of these are March. These are like our very first pumps. So like I have like colostrum in here and yeah, so there's all of this. There's all of these. These are all five ounce bags. And then what I have in the house. So this is how I store it. I store it by date in the deep freeze. So it's earliest to latest. And I always pull from the earliest pump. I will save the colostrum until like she's sick or she needs like these extra um, liquid gold essentials that is in the colostrum. So I will save those, but I will pull from like here and make my way around. That way I know that the milk won't expire before I get to it. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful for you. If you have any other questions, please comment down below and let me know and I will try to answer them all. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll have more videos coming out like essentials and stuff like that. And we will see you in our next video. Thanks for watching.